And now, Lifestyles Unlimited presents the Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Over the next hour, we unfold your map to financial freedom. You'll learn how to retire through investing in single family and multifamily real estate. You'll learn how to create cash flow and build wealth so you can have the time and money to live the lifestyle you want. Hello and welcome to the show. This is Andy Webb with Lifestyles Unlimited. And as always, we're working on your financial freedom. And if you're new to the program, I'm going to introduce you to what we're doing this day and, and, and a number of days into the future. We have a series of interviews that we're conducting with our Lifestyles Unlimited Realty sales managers in each of the states and distinct markets, essentially, where, where we operate. We went east already into Georgia. And uh, Al Gordon, one of my fellow hosts, has, has interviewed our sales manager in Tennessee. Well, now, today, we're going to head the totally opposite direction, and we're going to head west. We're going we're gonna to head to a place I want to go, the, to the Grand Canyon State. And I've got Stacy with me. She's the sales manager for Arizona. So we're going we're gonna to pick her brain. And if you're like I am, you're in Dallas-Fort Worth or somewhere in Texas or somewhere in this great country of ours, and you're thinking about investing in Arizona, well, this is the show for you. So Stacy, are you with me? How are you doing? I'm doing good. Nice to talk with you this morning. Absolutely. And to that point, I'm in central time. You're all the way over there in Pacific time. I hope you have a good cup of coffee with you. <laughs> so bright I do, and I do. alert. Um, and, and it's a pleasure to have you on. You know, I have seen you a number of times over the years. You know, we do the, the, the virtual road trips, both for single mm -hmm. family and multifamily, and I've, I've seen you present properties for sale at those over over the years, so I'm sure we'll get into that a little bit later, but uh, I do want to set the table because, like me, you are also a member of Lifestyles Unlimited, yeah. so I want to learn a little bit about you and your, your background maybe before real estate, before lifestyles, so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, if you would? Oh, sure. So I grew up, I've, I grew up in Arizona, and I... Uh, went to college and spent about 16 years in the corporate America environment and just became very disinterested with it and uh, was looking for a career change and decided to move into real estate and, and got my license as a, a realtor. And I've been practicing real estate uh, for since like 2006. 16 and uh, then been working with the Lifestyles uh, Phoenix office for like the last five years. Okay, very good. So you, you're in Phoenix or working with the Phoenix mm -hmm. office. Uh, again, I know you became a member. Um, how did you hear about Lifestyles Unlimited in Arizona? I would think just like many of the uh, people who are listening uh, to the show, to your show and to Dell's show, I would be driving and would turn on the, the radio and that's how I was listening to it and uh, continue to listen to Dell's radio show and became very enthusiastic and uh, liked the you know what he was saying so attended a two-day event brought my husband with me and uh, continued to educate him on what I was learning through Dell's radio show and then decided in 2019 to become members. So I started off as a member and was still doing real estate on the residential side with another broker. Okay, and, very uh, good. Yeah. Where, where was the two-day for you? It was in Phoenix. At that time, it was not in our office. They had not opened up an office. And um, it was just in, uh, it was at the end of the year in December. And uh, just went to one of the um, off-site, um, you know, wherever you guys had your events before you opened up your, your office and, and did that. Okay, very good. And for the listener's sake, the, the two-day, that is the Financial Freedom Seminar. That's part of the Financial Freedom Program. Um, and that's a, a full of information, uh, wouldn't you mm -hmm. say, Stacey? Day one, all about single family. Day two all about uh, multifamily. You, you were a realtor already at the time doing retail stuff. What were the big aha moments, the big takeaways for you as a, as a realtor, as somebody that's kind of in the business already when you went to that two-day? So in that two-day, they covered two types of investment uh, models for members. They, they talk about building your wealth through single family, 
And then they also talk about building your wealth uh, in a passive environment through multifamily. And so I had not been looking at building wealth in the single family environment with rentals based on the model that Dell teaches. Because if you talk to other investors, they don't look for cash flow numbers that is taught in uh, lifestyles and then also hadn't even really thought about the multifamily side. And, and even if you think about it, no one, you don't usually know how to go about getting into it. So uh, those were things that I really had liked and, and really wanted to be a part of. And, and this uh, in, uh, group helps you get, get there. Now, Stacy, I know we Pacific time where you are, so a couple hour difference here. Um, mm-hmm. Geographical differences, we'll, we'll probably get to those a little bit as well. But fundamentally, the things that you learned at the two day, the things that I learned at the two day, that anybody that goes to that financial freedom seminar, those are the same. You you mentioned cash flow. We one of Dell's rules to investing is that it has to cash flow, <laughs> right? You learned that is important. Um, and learn much more about the the model. And for the listener, Dell is uh, Dell Walmsley. He's uh, the founder of Lifestyles Unlimited. He put this wonderful organization together over 34 years ago in Houston, Texas, and and it's growing. So we're uh, speaking to that growth over this course of shows. So um, thinking again about the two day, you mentioned that you actually went uh, in person to that there in, in Phoenix, Arizona, and you also mentioned brick and mortar. We now have a brick and mortar office in Phoenix. That's actually the only one outside of Texas that we do have. When did that open? 2019 or maybe the first part of 2020. I think it was right before so, COVID came down the yeah. the ramp, wasn't it? Yeah, I remember, okay, we just opened this brick and mortar all excited and then what do we do as a yeah. country? Shut it down. Okay, all right. I so, know, I know. <laughs> that's okay, we're open again and uh, up and running. And I wanna shift now to your market because you you got the brick and mortar there, great. We can go to the two day there as I talked about, um, learn about the model. And what I want to learn about is the market. So what makes Arizona a great market to invest in single family and multifamily? So for our market, our strengths are is that we have very low property taxes, especially in your secondary and your, tri- and your tertiary markets. They will have uh, low annual property taxes that um, other markets like, you know, Texas, um, they have a, a different type of property tax going on. Also, um, insurance rates for homes, because we don't have any natural disasters that hit our, our state, we don't really have an increase in those prop, um, insurance rates. We don't have foundation issues at all as well. And one thing that we've do have is we've had really strong appreciation on homes in the last two and three years compared to some of the other markets. Okay, and appreciation as we teach it is icing on the cake, but boy, I'll tell you when mm-hmm. it's there, it's there and it's a, <laughs> it's a wonderful thing. By the way, and I was gonna ask yeah. you about appreciation uh, in the show, so you've, you've hit that. I don't know if you caught this, the, the latest inflation read just came out this week and it's down, it's down a lot. Uh, I believe it's something mm-hmm. around 3%, but you know there's a big piece of the, the, the core piece of the inflation that didn't go down, it's actually up and that's housing, that's, that's the cost of rent. And that speaks to what you're saying there as well. That's I don't think that's gonna go down in the foreseeable future. It's sticky, right? You, you sign a 12 month lease, yeah. you're there for a while. Um, but a good, good point of interest. Uh, is that you are growing in 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 value there, and you you used a term I do want to come back to. Um, you mentioned secondary and tertiary markets. I'm looking at a map right now of Arizona. I see very large letters Phoenix. I see Tucson. Are those primary markets? I suppose. So Phoenix is going to be yes. Phoenix will be your primary market, and then Tucson is considered based, and they base it on population numbers. Tucson would be. Uh, a secondary market, but outside of the Phoenix market, because Phoenix is, you know, dead center, we have all of these other cities that surround it. So you can call those the secondary. And then outside of that secondary, there are even tertiary market properties. And then, um, and then there's two, then there would be Tucson. So kind of based on, you know, 
the, the distance between um, Phoenix and those tertiary markets and then and Tucson is, is where we look for properties. Okay. I'm seeing as well, smaller on my map here, Prescott, Sedona, Flagstaff. Are those markets of interest? They are when the numbers make sense. So Phoenix is different. I mean, Arizona as a state is different. So Phoenix is like one large county. And then uh, then you've got Flagstaff, Prescott, and Tucson that all are in different counties. So I usually will find properties in the Maricopa County where Phoenix sits in. And Phoenix is growing, I don't know the the last few years what we've seen, but just from, you know, the census is conducted every 10 years from 2010 to 2020, it was the fastest growing city in, in the nation. Um, do you have a feel what have, what's been going on in the last couple of years since 2020? Good grief. It's been growing so much. And in the last couple of years, we're just getting people moving here um, definitely from the west coast and from other states for either from a quality of life issue to even housing and job and so it's it's just um, causing a lot of uh, people moving here and and finding single family or residential properties can even be you know, challenging because everyone's moving here. So it creates our inventory to be lower. Yep, absolutely. And that article I was reading about the the, the recent inflation report, again, they said housing costs uh, are not coming down meaningfully. And in fact, it says mm-hmm. because the, the Fed has pushed up the rates a, as much as they have the interest rates, um, people are not wanting to move, right, from those low interest rate properties yeah. they have. So we don't have the inventory. So, yes, may, even if there's a little bit of a, a decline in, in demand, supply is declining faster. So we still see those, those basic economic dynamics in your market, in Dallas, in, in, in Atlanta, you know, everywhere across the country right now, I would say. Mm-hmm. But as you noted, people are moving there. And that just adds even even more, more pressure. Um, who is moving there? Is it is it is it is it people moving for jobs? Is it I, I'm picturing baby boomers that are retiring, right? Uh, maybe I'm picturing that wrong. But what what do we see in there? We're, we're seeing more like families um, that are just wanting to to let's just say move out of a, a California area and then move here and then job transfers. And the other one is is people who are maybe coming from. The East Coast or colder city environments, uh, I say their bones have been frozen for a long time and they <laughs> want to uh, de- uh, defrost themselves So and soak up our sun. You do have those people who just love that sun exposure all the time. So <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's a split between many different things, uh, and it's not just one. Okay, I see we got a break coming up, so this is a kind of off topic, but based on what you just said, are you a one season state then, or do you have any seasons over there? I'm going to say we we could have two, maybe <laughs> okay. three, depending. All right. Well, I know it's hot there, it's hot here, uh, and the market is hot as well as we we were hearing, and we're going to learn a little bit more about that market when we come back. Got questions? Call Lifestyles Unlimited at 855-497-4335. The Real Estate Investor Radio Show continues next. A reminder from Del Wamsley, CEO of Lifestyles Unlimited. Remember this. Sellers, motivated sellers are found, but deals are made. It's valuable information. Learn how to find those motivated sellers and get the deals done. Join our free online workshop and learn how to retire in five years or less at lifestylesunlimitedworkshop.com. Lifestylesunlimitedworkshop.com. Once again, that's lifestylesunlimitedworkshop.com. Creating the lifestyle you've always wanted. You're hearing Lifestyles Unlimited's Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Andy Webb. If you have any questions for me, you can send an email to askandy at luinc.com. Again, askandy at luinc.com. 
com. And I'm joined today by Stacy. She's the sales manager in Arizona. So we're focused on the state of Arizona, the Grand Canyon state. Stacy, boy, I got, I, we were just talking over the break. I'm an avid RVer and I'm, I'm just, I'm just hankering to get that thing hitched up and head west and uh, take my son to the, the Grand Canyon, see all the wonderful uh, nature, ge- geography and whatnot that you have there. And I know it's a hot spot for our viewers. We we're talking about that, literally no pun intended. We, we all like to go there. So I don't know how that plays into the market for you, but, um, just an interesting point of view, I suppose. Um, I am interested to know, we've talked about some of the demographics, people moving there from a business perspective. What are you seeing with respect to companies coming in? I would say that we're seeing, a, uh, depending on the east or the west valley is the term we use for the phoenix area more uh, companies coming out and um, building manufacturing operations uh, semiconductor companies we've got uh, electronic vehicle company out in the east valley area that ha- is building um, battery companies and even some biotechnology companies. And it's at different er- you know, parts of the valley. So you've got the West Valley, and then you've got the East Valley, and then we've also got a semi- semiconductor uh, company from Taiwan who's breaking ground and building out in the north part of our city and all bringing in a lot of jobs. And those people need places to live. So I'm hearing tech. I'm hearing this is becoming a mm-hmm. tech hotspot, and that those are good-paying jobs, are they not? Yes, they are. They are good-paying jobs, and um, and people are just moving, and you're just seeing the growth go. Very good. And you mentioned in the prior segment, I, I from my uninformed standpoint here in Dallas, I'm picturing all the baby boomers, like what you talked about as well, fl- you know, fleeing the the cold environment for this 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 warm. Uh, uh, destination we have that as well but I, but I like what you said that it's families too I you know mm-hmm. I can't discriminate when I rent my single family houses out but I like it when it's families because they they tend to move in and they they tend to stick around their kids go to the schools mm-hmm. there and they don't want to move them right no they don't they want to create a uh, a family environment they want to stay and 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 you know make this their new city yeah I love it so it's business friendly. We've got the tech uh, uh, sprouting there, and I am curious from a as somebody that operates single family houses. I'm you know I, I do have to ask the question on the the I guess landlord friendly or not friendly side. What does that look like in Arizona? We have uh, it is very landlord friendly and it's strong. And Lifestyles looks for markets that are are of that where you guys look, we, we have offices in those markets. Yeah. We, we're not going to go to a crazy high cost uh-huh. market where the numbers don't work. And we're not going to go to one where we move somebody in and can't ever get them out. I mean, you go a little bit to the West and they're, they're mm-hmm. having problems. Oakland, for example, big, big problems there. Moratoria just lifted and uh, just nightmares, but not in Arizona. So for the listener, that's what yeah. I want you to take away. Um, so you can, if you have to go that route, but, but Stacey, I'll tell you, as somebody that's been doing this for over a decade, I've only had to do that once. And it was very early in my career as a single family investor. And it's because I did not listen to my mentors. I did not follow the roadmap that Dell handed me and got off track yeah. and messed up. But if you listen to what you're taught and you screen right, um, you're not going to have any problems. You're not going to even have to worry about this. So very good information there. And I want to come back to something you said. You mentioned cash flow. Right. We, we want to see it cash flow. And you you talked about a couple of things that feed into that. So typically when we're buying, you know, we've got our gross rents and we're paying our fixed costs out of that. That's going to be the mortgage. But then two big components here in Texas that can eat into the profit are the, the taxes and the insurance. Tell us again about what those look like in Arizona. So, again, like um, you had touched on, we have low property taxes. Um, there was a proposition that went in effect in 2015, just putting a cap on annual property taxes. So we have that in place. So we are going to, as a state, have consistently low property taxes. And when it comes to the insurance rates for your homes, our insurance rates don't jump up very high and they're not high in general compared to some of these other markets because we don't have any 
natural disasters going on, so that's not driving up our, our uh, insurance rates. I know numbers can change, but I do want to ask because I, you know, I just got a renewal from my carrier on a is a three bedroom, two bath house, two car garage, about fifteen hundred square feet. It jumped up over two thousand dollars. Are we talking yeah. a little less than that, or what? What kind of numbers might I see there? I know they can vary, but what what are you what are you seeing? So when we work with our members, uh, I do find out what their insurance quote or cost will be. It's actually part of the transaction um, with the title company. And I'm always observing that number. And it'll range just based on uh, the square footage and that particular member. But I'll see it as low as 400 to $800 annually oh, oh, oh. for a single-family house. That is amazing. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. As somebody that's in Texas, and you, 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 you mentioned this, that, yeah, we've got the occasional weather calamity, and that, that's, that's the big driver there. But yeah. um, 400 I, I, I cannot even wrap my mind around that. So that, again, to the listener, that points to cash flow. Um, yes. I'm not having to pay as much to the carrier. I'm not having to pay as much to the, uh, the, the, tax, the taxing uh, entities. So very good information there. Yeah, and, and, and I will say, and we, we talked about this as well with Darlene, the, a lot of the what I'll call retail agents out there don't really get what we're talking about as investors. They don't understand the model. They, they bring you stuff that doesn't really work waste a lot of time, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is a challenge as an investor to find a good realtor sometimes, but I know with you being a lifestyles realtor and, and a member, right, that's I think a key yeah. point there as well, um, that you do know and you understand and, and, and you've gone through the education your, yourself. Um, now, we were talking ahead of the break about processes and you, you, you know, transactions and whatnot. And I usually differentiate in my head uh, the the sources of this inventory. Now that doesn't affect the transaction necessarily at the you know at the title company, but typically we're buying either off the MLS, which is on the market, mm-hmm. or we're buying from wholesalers, truly off market uh, properties. Most of what I've sourced in in Dallas or in, or in DFW over my lifetime have been from wholesalers. What what does that look like in in your market? Well, when we look for properties for these members, we're not buying them at those prices. We're looking for properties that are, are if, if not half that cost. And then looking at it from a perspective of what can, what does this property need to bring it up to market value? We analyze the equity that can be captured through that process. And then uh, we also determine the cash flow that would be associated with that property and then present it to the members as an opportunity. So all the basic key information I need to make a a starting decision, but are these, so we're buying discounted properties there like everywhere else. Are these typically Mm -hmm. uh, MLS sources or wholesaler? Where's the inventory coming from? Most of it's coming from the MLS for right now. Yeah. And is the in in Texas if I go to make an offer on an MLS property, I may make a I may put an option period in there. I may not. Um, earnest money obviously comes into play. What do some of the terms look like that you're you're putting together there right now? Anyhow, so with the MLS properties, we do have a ten day uh, inspection period. So if you have an offer that's accepted, we the buyer has 10 days to go into the property and do as much due diligence as possible and then determine, does this property make sense to move forward? And um, yes, you do need to provide an earnest deposit within the first three days. And um, and then if you decide to move forward with the pro- uh, property, then your earnest money does become hard. And if you decide that the property isn't the right fit for your investment goals, then um, you make a decision before your due diligence period ends and you get your earnest money back. So there's some protection involved. Um, and it's really making sure as an agent, we understand that contract. And I say the rules of engagement. <laughs> yeah, very good. So in Texas, I often have to make a, a decision it, it, when, when, when putting my offer together. And I always have the conversation with my Lifestyles Realty uh, team here. Do I should I have an option period or not? Sometimes it's a competitive submarket where it's better to go in with no option period. Well, I'm, my, my <laughs> earn his money's hard from day one. I like that with Arizona. That's a safety valve for me. 
and I put my earnest money down, I make the payment, I can get it back. Now, I'm curious, thinking about the, the inventory itself, it, largely from the MLS, uh, I know there are some wholesalers out there, but I'm curious about the houses in, let's say, in Phoenix, and thinking about Dallas. I don't know how familiar you are with our house inventory here, but can you speak to the differences? Uh, you know, construction, are these older builds? Are these newer construction? What are we seeing in the market? Yeah, members are usually buying older properties, uh, anything from 50 to 90s built. Um, and then those properties obviously need some love. And so they're going in there and making the needed renovations um, given that particular neighborhood and market, not putting too much into it and not putting too little into the property, just enough to get that uh, to maximize the rental income. Now, I'm curious, you get that member from Hawaii that's buying somewhere in Arizona. They're clearly not nearby. They're not driving the property like I might do in Dallas. How do you help them as somebody that's remote? How do you help them through the through the process? So we first determine always what their investment goals are. Each person has a different uh, direction. And so I make sure that I'm making notes and capturing that, and then I go and look for properties on that behalf. Uh, I put together a pretty extensive package of data and materials to prove why I'm selecting this property, what the comparables are looking for rentals and sold, and what type of improvements need to be done, and present that to them, and then um, review it with them. And if they decide that they are interested, then we go and take a look at it. Now, because they're out of state, technology makes it very easy yep. to do a video showing. And we do a video showing, and I really take the time to look at that property from, from their eyes, uh, for their eyes. And, um, and then after that, they usually will have a very good idea whether or not they want to move forward or they, they decide it's not the right fit for their needs. And uh, if we do move forward, then we write up a contract and I walk them through, you know, the steps involved of how real estate transactions go in Arizona. And I make sure that they're extremely comfortable. And I do this all day long. And maybe for that particular member, this might be their first transaction. So for them, it feels foreign, but for me, it's very natural. So uh, I just make sure I'm, I'm making it as smooth a uh, transaction. And every transaction is not the same, but um, this is my job. It's my profession. And so I make, um, make sure I take care of anything that comes along the way. Yeah, very them. good. We don't have much time left. I guess you're, you've got the infrastructure, the infrastructure there, excuse me, from the perspective of contractors then because we are doing renovations. So you help point them in the, the right direction there as well, I, I trust. Yes. Okay. We do. Very good. I think what I'm hearing is it's it's numbers, right? It's knowing your numbers. What am I looking for? You communicate that to Stacy. She helps you find that house that meets those needs. And it's just a numbers game. You do your due diligence. She helps you with that. And uh, through the transaction, you know, is at your side. And if the numbers, if they they prove true, you you move forward. Any any last advice for the listener? Um, I can't think of it, it other than I look forward to speaking with any of the members and doing business with them. Yeah, get out to that too, did I mentioned again? Give me totalfreedom.com. By the way, promo code save big all caps gives you a two year membership heavily discounted. So check that out. Get out to the one in Phoenix. We got one in Anaheim, California, and across the nation. The information and opinions you hear on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show are those of the host, guests, and callers. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented constitutes an endorsement, recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.